you have written a short story called um, Safe. Yeah. So we talked about it in the workshop today. So what's the long version? The yeah. long version. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, exactly. There's two versions. Two stories called Safe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we thought, um, what happens to the baby at the end? Okay. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, yeah. And what happens to the baby at the end is a good question because it leaves you kind of. That's the sort of the, the dramatic clipping hanging ending, isn't it? Um, well, my idea when I was writing the story was that actually the mother, because the story is about a woman who, who has a baby and she's trying to look after this baby, but babies are disappearing and there's also rats that are uh, infesting the city. And so my idea was actually that the story was about a woman who was dealing with the loss of a baby. So she'd been pregnant and had, I didn't know, had a miscarriage or a stillbirth or something, so she'd lost the baby. And so actually my idea was that you would read the story thinking there was a baby, but really she never had a baby at all. And I thought it would be obvious at the end that she didn't. It turned out that actually it's not near, really so obvious at the end of the story at all. And, and that some people read it and do come to that conclusion. Some people read it and come to a totally different conclusion and think maybe the rats took the baby or the baby did just disappear. And I decided I wanted to, deliberately to leave it ambiguous. I like the fact that it can be read in different ways. Um, but for me, it really, yeah, the baby disappears because this is the point when she finally, you know, comes to reality and realizes I don't have a baby anymore and that's why it's gone. <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and I uh, read another short story and it's uh, a long bird cage roll. Oh, okay. Uh, because why did you decide to uh, the story to take place in 1664? Yeah, okay, good question. Um, well, I really like writing historical things. I've always been really interested in history. And so I like writing historical things basically because it gives me an excuse to just learn about history, to research new things and research about new periods and, and times. Um, I'm also really interested in, I mean, it, in that respect, with also uh, languages. I mean, it's sort of ironic that I'm so bad at foreign languages and I don't speak <laughs> German because I'm really, really interested in language itself. And in English, I can do it really well. <laughs> and I'm really interested in different dialects and different ways that people would have spoken at different times. And I'm interested to try and use that in my writing. So quite a lot of the stories actually written in different sort of, you know, different dialects, which sometimes makes it hard for non-native speakers. But with that story in particular, I was um, asked by, it was a commissioned story, so I was asked by the, um, the Royal Parks of, of London, so I think there's eight Royal Parks, and they decided that they were doing a project where they were getting a writer to write about each park. And I had St James's Park, in, which is just where the Mall is, leading up to Buckingham Palace in London. And I got to spend a day with the park keeper and learn about the history of the park. And the idea was that I would then get inspiration to write something. So you were asking about how to get inspiration, yeah. and that was the way. It was just like, okay, there I was in a park. I was like, right, I've got to come up with something to write about. And you know, I got to talk with him and ask about the history. And he told me so many things. I had so many stories I could have written about. But one of the things, when we were walking down one side of the park, there is a street called Birdcage Walk. And now it's a totally normal London street with, you know, black cabs driving down it and lots of people. And he said, oh yeah, in um, King Charles's day, this was an avenue of trees, and that's why it's called Birdcage Walk, because down here, this avenue, in the trees, King Charles hung all the bird cages with his exotic birds, and people would walk down there and... Uh, and look at these birds and admire them. And uh, another question about that story yeah. is, uh, did you want the story to have an ending like this? So did you plan that from the beginning or yeah. does it just happen so you were inspired while writing the story? Good question. Yeah, because it's quite uh, a surprising ending. Oh, yeah. And again, it's quite an ambiguous ending. Um, and I, I did, again, I deliberately did that. I think I do that with quite a lot of my stories because I like that sense that I'm playing with the reader a bit and that there can be different readings of the story because I wanted in some ways you could read it as a story about a woman whose his husband is yeah. is sick and, uh, yeah. and is potentially dying and maybe that the disappearance yeah. in the end is him, of him dying but then also you can read it more literally um, and, and read it that 
he literally is flying away at the end of the story. <laughs> and then we, it becomes a much more surreal story. Of, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to give it away to everyone, but yes, this, you know what happens with, uh, with him turning into a bird at the end. And so is there any message in this story, or is it just to, I don't know, to set people in a completely different situation in the everyday life? Um, <laughs> It's sort of a love story, really, that story, even though it's a sad one because she loses her husband. But then she also, she loses him, but she allows him his freedom as well. And so I suppose that's also why it's sort of a love story. And she's making the sacrifice for him in, in letting him get free because that's what he needs to do, really, to, to survive and to, to exist in the way he is. Um, so I suppose that was what, one of the themes I was sort of thinking about when I wrote. <laughs> yeah, also do um, the workshops for uh, our school and yeah. for others, I guess, as well. Yeah. So, um, how do you came up with the ideas for your workshops? Oh, the ideas, again, everywhere. Um, and it's come over, I mean, I've been teaching now for a decade. So, I started with really young children when I started teaching. Um, which I think was a really helpful thing because I mean, they were sort of from seven years old, like really young. <laughs> and, uh, and so it taught me, I think that experience of working with really young children taught me how to get people writing in a way that's very easy. I hope it was easy uh, for all of you to get writing um, because I know that for a lot of people, especially if it's not something you've done before, uh, it, it can be quite difficult to, to actually do it, the process. Um, so yeah, I've learned ways of sort of like doing it so it's quite sort of guided and before you know it you've come up with ideas and you've got things and, and in terms of what I actually use for the workshops, um, I'm always coming up with new ideas because I always have to keep coming up with new workshops so I'm always thinking about new things that I could get people writing about and, and I test them out and sometimes they work better than others, <laughs> but, you know, it's natural, um, but then you work out what does work well and, uh, and it's really, really great when it does and you can see people being like, ah, <laughs> you know, having good ideas and, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah so it's, um, that was a very interesting interview. And, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah. <laughs>